friends welcome to the lecture 44 of the course advanced steel design in this lecture we are going to learn more about curved beams i'll call them lecture as curved beams 1 okay the foremost question comes in mind is how curved beams are classified. Curved beams are classified in two ways, beams with small initial curvature and beams with large initial curvature. Now, what do you understand by small and large? How do you quantify this? If the initial radius of curvature divided by depth of the section is greater than 10, we call this designated as beams or curved beams with small initial curvature. Now, let us look into the discussions of behavior of curved beams with small initial curvature in bending. Okay, we will look into this now. Let us say, I have a curved beam shown in the figure here. Let us say this is now subjected to a moment as shown in the figure. Let us say the radius indicated is r. Okay. So, R is the initial radius of curvature d phi is the angle subtended the center of curvature. I will mark d phi. by the element A, B, C, D. Let us first mark the element A, B, C, D. So, 
say this is the angle subtended, we call this as d phi and this element, this is A, this is B and this is C and this is D. Okay. Then R prime is a radius after applying the moment. So, when you apply a moment as shown in the figure, the radius of curvature now changes. Let us say we mark a new center here. And let us say the new angle subtended by this is d phi prime and the radius is r prime. Now, we will take a fiber, please note that r prime is much lesser than r, that is it is very important applied moment is closing the curvature. Okay. See, before m is applied, the radius of curvature was r. After m is applied, it reduced to r prime in such a condition that r prime is smaller than r. So, the applied moment actually closes the curvature. Okay? We have to remember this very carefully. Right? This is a very important sign convention we need to. Okay. And of course, d phi, d phi prime is now the angle subtended. by the element after deformation. Let us mark the element layer PQ and mark it here. At a distance y this is p q at a distance y away from the center. Okay. So, let us mark the cross section somewhere here and let us mark the axis. Okay. We call this as n n axis which is the neutral axis and we take any point which is above this measured as y. Okay, that is what we have marked. Okay. So, it is very important m is applied in such a manner that it closes the curvature, it does not open, it does not open the curvature, okay, it closes the curvature. We consider a fiber at y from the neutral axis. Now, let us see 
what is the original length of this fiber? The original length of this fiber will be r plus y d phi, is it not? Before m is applied will be equal to r plus y d phi. See this figure r is this value and this is y d phi is this angle that is the original thing. Okay. Now, after applying this moment m which is closing the curvature the length of this fiber is now reduced to r prime plus y d phi prime. Am I right? After m is applied, which tends to close the curvature, length of the fiber is now given by r dash plus y d phi dash. Therefore, friends change in length of the fiber because I am looking for strain which will be r dash plus y d phi dash minus r plus y d phi. So, now I can find the strain epsilon which is change in length by original length which will be equal to r prime plus y d phi prime minus r plus y d phi by r plus y d phi. We will call the equation number 1. But please note that length of any fiber located in the neutral axis remains unchanged. Okay, there is no change in the neutral axis. So, friends if you take any fiber in the neutral axis let us say I am marking that fiber here. If you take any fiber in the neutral axis that is this fiber okay, this length will remain unchanged. So, therefore, d s will be r d phi which is same as r dash d phi dash see in this figure. If I call this as d s before and after applying the moment there will be no change because this is a fiber measure the neutral axis. So, I call this equation number 2. Okay. Now, I substitute 2 in equation 1. And simplify. Let us see what do we get. We get strain because this equation is for the strain equation 1. Okay, which will become y times of d phi dash minus d phi by r plus y d phi. Is it okay?
ओके कौन सी क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री नाउ वी नो दैट द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द फाइबर y from the n n axis is very small compared to the initial radius of curvature we are given a small displacement therefore y is very very less compared to y hence y may be neglected in comparison to or wherever we have this formulation therefore i write modified strain epsilon will be y times of d phi prime minus d phi by simply r d phi <coughs> because r plus y is identically equal to r for y being very very small we can see equation number 4 now from equation 2 we know that ds is r d phi let's see what is equation 2 okay which is also equal to r dash d phi dash so d phi is ds by r and d phi dash is ds by r dash we call c equation number 4 a so we have equation 4 where d phi dash is there substitute equation 4 a in equation 4 So equation four is for epsilon, which is y times of d phi dash minus d phi by r d phi, which now become y times of d phi dash. By d s minus d phi by d s, which is equal to y times of one by r prime minus one by r. Equation five. Further, epsilon is also ratio. Stress to this, so therefore y of one by r prime minus one by r should be equal to stress by e. So stress by y is e times of one by r prime minus one by r. We call this equation as equation number six. so we make certain assumptions <coughs> while doing this derivation let's see what are they there are certain assumptions made in curved beams which are similar to straight beams every cross section 
of a curved beam remains plane and perpendicular to the centroidal axis before and after application of external moment now to satisfy this condition net force acting on the cross section of the curved beam should be 0. If it is not equated to 0, then it will cause warping. Okay? So, mathematically, integral stress d a for the area should be 0. Equation number 7. Now, let us substitute equation 6 in equation 7. What is equation 6? We have the stress value in equation 6 here. Let us substitute that in equation 7. So, you know this should be now equated e times of integral of y 1 by r dash minus 1 by r of d a and equate this to 0, which means e times of 1 by r dash minus 1 by r integral y d a should be equal to 0. So, if we call this equation number 8, let us copy this equation. In equation 8, e times of 1 by r dash minus 1 by r cannot be equated to 0. Hence, integral y d a should be only equated to 0. Because if this is equated to 0, if this is equated to 0, then no curvature. Okay. What does it mean? We call this equation number 9. Equation 9 implies that geometric axis coincides with neutral axis. How can we say this? You know y is measured from the geometric axis. See this figure? And this is my neutral axis. So, this condition is now applied and it is very interesting. This is forming the basis for the derivation of the curved beams. Okay? 
Now, since the curved beam is in equilibrium under the applied moment m, one can okay, following statement holds good. d a into y should be equated to the moment. Now, from equation 6, substitute for stress in equation 10, we get a times of a y 1 by r dash minus 1 by r of y d a is m, which implies that e one by r dash minus one by r integral y square d a should be m. Okay. We have a very interesting term arrived here. What is this y square d a called? Second moment of area. That is a very standard expression we have in mechanics. We know integral a y square d a is the moment of inertia. Hence, e times of 1 by r dash minus 1 by r into i is m. Am I right? See here. So, now I have a very interesting and standard relationship m by i is e times of 1 by r dash minus 1 by I mean this is a familiar equation similar to that of a straight beam because equation number 11. Now, let us copy equation 6 here. I want to copy this equation and then compare. Okay, I want to compare. Now, let us compare equation 6 and equation 11. So, the right hand side is same. Can you now say stress by y m by i is a times of 1 by r dash minus 1 by r. The standard relationship friends for a curved beam which is more or less looking similar to the of a straight beam is it not? Whereas, we have a new term here 1 by r dash ok that is the theory of flexure which we are recollect that equation m by i is stress by y is e by r. It is the standard relationship we have for straight beams. Is it not? It is more or less similar to that. Okay. This is what is very interesting for the curved beams are concerned. Having said this, let us take our discussion forward for curved beams of large initial curvature. Now, let us recollect if initial radius of curvature to 
depth of the section is lesser than 10, we can call this beam this curved beam is termed as beam with large initial curvature. Can I say that? Because more than 10 is small, I can say this. So, there are some special applications and properties of this condition. What are these? There are some special conditions. One, the stress variation in such beams across the depth of the section will be nonlinear. What does it mean? Stress in the concave side is generally greater than stress in the convex side. These are experimental observations. Experimental studies in the literature show that this statement is valid. Okay, that is a general information we need. The second point is neutral axis will not pass through the centroidal axis Why? Because the stress on the concave side is not equal to the stress on the convex side. Further, stress along the depth is non-in. So, these two conditions make this condition valid. Okay, now, we will take up this for our discussion. So, I am talking about beam with large curvature. Let us draw Let us call this angle as d phi. Let us cut a new section as d phi prime. from the same center. Say this angle is d phi dash. We mark the four corners A, B, C, D. Let us mark a layer P Q. Okay, let us mark the neutral plane first on the x x axis. Let us mark the x x axis with 
we call this as x axis. Okay. The neutral plane is lying below this. This is a neutral plane. Let us take a fiber PQ marked at a distance y from x axis. Say this is PQ fiber. Okay. <clears throat> this is the convex side also called as extra dos. This is the concave side also called as intra dos. We are applying a moment which is closing the curvature that is the nature of the moment. Okay. This is standard and convention we are. Now, the offset of the neutral axis from the x axis is marked as E and the distance of neutral axis sorry x x axis from the center is marked as R. We will call this as d phi, we will not have marked this, okay. we will call this as d phi, that is a strip being cut, okay. that is a strip. <coughs> Let us say, I project this, project this and try a cross section, in a cross section. What may be the shape? Okay. I draw a reference line, call this line as O. -O. So, on this I mark the CG. So, the xx axis will pass through the CG. Okay. This is my xx axis. I pick up any point on the line PQ, let us be here and we know this distance is measured from the x x axis as y. I can also mark the green line. as n n axis which is the neutral plane ok. Now, from the C g I mark this x x here. From the x x axis I mark the tip as H extra dos. I mark this tip as H intra dos. And the x axis is marked at a distance r from this plane. So, I mark this dimension as radius intra dos and this dimension as radius extra dos. And this as radius neutral axis.
okay there is a reference figure here is it clear so this figure 1 this figure 2 so we have neutral plane we have x x axis and the neutral plane is offset it from the x x axis towards the center of curvature neutral plane is shifted towards the center of curvature by y from the x x axis correct see here by e not y by e okay having said this we will now derive the governing equation for this section okay okay friends we will discuss that in the next lecture we will put a summary here for this lecture friends in this lecture we learnt curved beams with small initial curvature we have derived the equation stress by y m by i e by 1 by r prime minus 1 by r and it is more or less similar to the straight beam is it not equation we have also learned the conditions of curved beam for large initial curvature we have also learned the fact stresses in extra dos are not equal to stress in intra dos and therefore the stress distribution across the depth of the section of the curved beam is not the we have learned this fact okay we will continue to discuss this in the next lecture and derive the control e equation for finding out these stresses in extra dos inter dos using what we call as Bing Winkler back equation okay thank you very much and have a good day